What's up hobby friends and welcome to my video tutorial on how to paint Hawkeye from Marvel Crisis Protocol. I've got the colors I've used for this model up on the screen. So if you want to give it a pause, we can dive right on in. I'll also have a link to how I painted the base in the video description below. I'm going to start with a base coat of Indian Shadow and I'm going to apply this over all of the areas of the skin. You'll want to do a couple of thin passes to make sure you have a nice even base coat over the black primer. Next, I'll start to highlight with AK's base flesh. I'm going to apply a nice even base coat covering all of the muscles and leaving just a bit of the deep shadow in that Indian Shadow tone. Next, I'll highlight by mixing in progressive amounts of beige red into my base flush. At this point now, you want to pay attention to all of the different muscle groups. Make sure that you're highlighting all of those valleys to connect the different muscles. You want to make sure that you give the entire thing the illusion of a layer of skin on top and not just painting each muscle as a separate component. By painting it connected, you give it a more organic feel. Whereas if you try and approach each muscle individually, it can end up looking a lot more like a suit of armor than something that's covered with a layer of skin. I'm gonna be fairly chunky with my highlights at this stage because I'll be going back in with an airbrush later on to do some glazes to smooth out all of the transitions. And I'm actually gonna be approaching all the elements of this model with the same technique. From there, I'll do a final highlight with some highlight flush. And again, targeting those super raised areas, being really chunky with the highlights. I'm gonna exaggerate the value contrast with these highlights because the airbrush glazing will smooth everything down. You can see here that again, targeting those valleys, making sure that I'm connecting all of those muscles to give the illusion that everything is connected and covered by that layer of skin. Once I'm done with the highlighting, I'll go back in with the airbrush. I'll start with a few glazes of base flush, and I will have this very heavily diluted, almost like a watercolor consistency, I would say five, six parts water to one part paint. And the goal is to lay down very thin layers with the airbrush, air dry, and then lay down the next layer. Next, I'll go back in with Indian shadow and target the deepest shadows. Again, thin layers, watercolor consistency, you can do this by hand. You get, I think, a lot more control with the brush. However, you have to have a stronger technique with glazing, whereas with the airbrush, I find that it's a lot easier to cover a larger area, much more smoothly and evenly with less control. Finally, I'll go back in with violet red, and I'm looking to add a bit of rosiness. So I'm looking in areas like the cheeks, under the armpits, and the elbows. The goal here is just to add a bit of warmth and saturation into that shadow tone. You can see that it's just a lot of small incremental layers very slowly building up those glazes. Next I'll be painting the gray blue suit. I'll start with a base coat of dark sea blue and I'm going to cover all of the areas that will be both in the gray blue suit as well as purple. Next I'll start highlighting with anthracite gray. Much like with painting the skin, I'm going to be going with super chunky highlights because the expectation is I will be using the airbrush afterwards to glaze and smooth out all of my transitions and create a softer, more natural blend. With this technique in mind, you do want to make sure that you're exaggerating those value jumps between your highlight steps and really making sure that you're laying down the highlights in the correct positions. That's more important at this stage than worrying about smooth blends. Next, I'll start mixing in progressive amounts of gray blue. The amount that you add will depend on how bright or how dark you want the suit. I think ultimately I take my final highlight to about 70, 30 gray blue anthracite gray. Not quite too pure gray blue, but fairly bright enough. Again, exaggerating that value contrast and that value jump because the airbrush will knock back a lot of those mid and highlight tones. For the first airbrush pass, I'm going back in with my dark sea blue. And you can see that I'm just slowly filtering in and laying down those progressive layers 
starting to really smooth out those blends. You can either work on a specific area using the airbrush to air dry each layer before laying down the next, or what I like to do is just do a pass over the entire figure. So that basically once I'm done my first pass and I go back to my first spot, it'll be dry and ready for the next glaze. Here, I'm just deepening the shadows by mixing in small amounts of black into my dark sea blue. Again, super watercolor consistency so that each individual layer doesn't have a huge impact, but it's that buildup, that progressive increasing of the layers that slowly builds up those blends, smooths everything out, and gives you a nice soft finish. To base coat the purple, I'm gonna use amethyst blue. And I'm going to basically leave just the deepest recesses and crevices in the dark sea blue, primarily where you have the trim of the purple meeting the larger flatter areas. I'll try and leave a bit of that dark sea blue showing through. From there, I'll start to highlight with some deep purple. Just like with the blue suit and with the skin, nice chunky highlights focusing on the placement of my highlights rather than creating blends right off the bat. Much like when you're painting the skin, the suit is one solid shape covering the muscles. And so you wanna make sure that you're connecting all of those valleys to make it feel like one whole piece rather than individual, for example, abdominal muscles. I'm gonna to start to introduce some intense pink into my highlighting mix and I'll just continue to raise up those, those highlights and push those values. And then finally, a last highlight of just pure intense pink. I wanted it to be fairly bright and almost a little pastel just because of the direction of everything else on the figure. I think my glazes afterwards do introduce a bit more of that richness, so I'm not so worried about losing a bit of that color in the midtones. So my first airbrush pass is a combination of the magenta and the purple. I diluted this a little bit more than the blue just so that any overspray wouldn't tint any of the surrounding blue suit or skin elements. So I ended up having to do a lot more passes with the airbrush for the purple elements. It also meant that when I was doing my highlighting by hand, I spent a little bit more time creating some smoother transitions so that I'd have less work to do with the airbrush and less risk of overspray into the surrounding elements. To paint all of the black and gray elements, I'll start with a base coat of ash gray. In particular, I'm making sure that around the buckles and any of the straps that overlap or any of the pouches that overlap, I'll leave some of that black in the crevices. My next highlight is with graphite, and I do go fairly chunky with this, particularly on some of the more, I think, metallic elements. So we're looking at the buckles, the bindings, any sort of trim on his belt. I treat as like a pseudo gray metallic and I'm a little sharper with my highlighting. My next highlight is with medium sea gray. Again, just going chunky with what should be metallic elements. And then in particular on the bow, I decided to concentrate a lot of the highlighting around the hand. It's not necessarily what makes the most sense based on the way that the bow curves. I think the highlighting should be, if it was more realistically lit, um, a little bit different, but I wanted to exaggerate the form of the bow more so than be realistic with the highlighting. My last highlight is with pale gray, just doing some sharp highlights on the metallic elements. And then again on the bow, continue to exaggerate the highlights closer to where the hand is actually gripping it. I'm making the choice here to exaggerate the curve and draw focus to where the hand is and where the arm is. To paint the hair, I'm gonna start with a base coat of World War I French Brown. You'll want to do a few passes for this to get a nice even finish and make sure you get it right up to the edge of the skin. From there, I'll start to highlight with number six earth yellow and I'll be painting the highlights in sort of this scratchy cross hatching motion to try and simulate the texture of the hair. I'll continue highlighting with the hair yellow. Again, short scratchy movements, um, get those brush strokes really showing through for the texture. And I do concentrate this highlighting more towards the front of the hair so that it's a bit more um, prominent on his bangs. 
My final highlight is a 50-50 mix of Sahara yellow and pale yellow. And I really concentrate this just on the front of the head around the edges. Too much of this and you end up knocking the hair more into like a pastel yellow ochre as opposed to more blonde, blondish yellow. To paint the Hydra armor on the base, I'll start with a base coat of reddish black. And I'll highlight with a first pass of wine red. This gives it a more sort of blood, blood crimson hue as opposed to a more orange red hue that I'm used to using and I actually liked how this turned out. I'll do a final highlight with Carmine, focusing on more of the texture of the armor, especially where it's like chipped and scratched and battle damaged. To paint the white hydra symbol, I'll start with a base coat of pale gray. Make sure that you do a few thin passes with a diluted layer just to get a nice smooth, even finish that isn't chunky. And then I'll do a simple highlight with pale sand. I'm keeping the highlights nice and sharp and I'm doing my best to keep it subtle so as not to draw too much attention away from the actual figure itself, but making sure that it still pops and has a bit of nuance in there. And then finally, I'll finish off the model with a glaze of Druchy Violet. Again, using the airbrush, I'm using this pure because with the airbrush, it comes on fairly translucent and I'm just using this to target all the deep shadows and add a bit more cohesive nuance to the entire figure. And that'll complete the Hawkeye. Again, I've got a link to another tutorial on how I painted the base, which I'll have in the description below. So if you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching and make sure you give it a like and subscribe for more awesome weekly content. If you want to check out my other social media platforms, I'll have links in the video description below. And as always, until next time, happy hobbying.